So Wednesday night, the Sixers take on the Celtics, but more importantly, we finally get to see a healthy Sixers roster. What is going on, everybody? I go by Philly Mike, and this is the Philly Talk Podcast. If you are new to the channel and love talking Philly sports every single day, we'll go right ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you haven't done it already, make sure you turn on post notifications so you know when I go live or drop some content. We will be doing a live play-by-play on Wednesday. Come through and let's watch the Sixers beat the Celtics. On that note, if you're just excited to see healthy Sixer basketball, smash that like button. And with all that being said, let's jump into today's topic. So we got a lot to talk about, but where I want to start is with this COVID-19 and how it really affected our team this last week and a half or so. I mean, we had a multitude of people out. Seth Curry has yet to play, who will be starting against the Celtics on Wednesday. Thank goodness. But I mean, Joe missed time, Ben, Tobias, Shake, Matisse, a lot of key pieces missed time. And how, in the early part of a season, with a new staff, a new starting lineup, a new bench, how are you going to get that chemistry and familiarity when you don't got the same lineup and you're switching these guys and switching that guys. I mean, there's some teams that brought back their whole team, like the Lakers, like the Clippers, like the Celtics. Their main pieces are the same. We got some new pieces because Shake in that six-man role is new. Seth is new. Danny is new. Maxie, who actually... That was the one bright spot we got from this COVID-19. Maxi started getting minutes, and we saw the potential of Maxi start to really creep up. We all knew he was good. We all knew he had the floater. We all knew he had that dog in him and was willing to shoot the ball, but we got to see more. He's just an ultimate competitor at 20 years old, and that's all you can ask for from the 21 overall pick. We even saw some good things from Isaiah Joe and Dakota Mathias, who eventually we waved, I think, yesterday or a couple days ago we end up waving Dakota Matthias so shout out to you hopefully you get picked up on a team or just do what you got to do to get back into the NBA but like I said this team lacked chemistry we're talking about the first 15 games the first 14 games and there was at least five or six where we got mix and match due to COVID-19 so hopefully we can avoid that and not get put in these situations because you're going to see that all across the NBA and these 72 games are going to be up and down especially if certain teams keep getting hit and hit with COVID-19 I'm not sure what they're going to do with that but thank God that's over we got the Celtics a much hated rival a team that's had our number especially when we talk about playoffs I mean they swept us last year so I'm glad to get healthy and get at them 100% another thing that's been lingering over this team is the Harden trade which now we can get that off our back Ben Simmons who wasn't a trade package hasn't been performing good let's be honest the defense is there the assistant is there everything that Ben Simmons does well is there however I'm not even talking about shooting the ball. I'm talking about the fact that years before he would attack the basket at a better rate than what he is now. And that jump pass was every once in a while. And now that's becoming an actual staple of his game. Going to the hole, jumping like you're going to shoot, and dishing it out. And that's part of the reasons why he's turning the ball over. Seven turnovers in the last game and only 11 points. Them things don't go together. 7-11, and 11, I mean, it's cool for a gas station, but not your starting point guard that you pay $180 million for. And again, I'm not going to come out here and say we need him to shoot. We need him to do this. I just want to see him attack the rim more. And again, when Ben Simmons, Tobias Harris, Joel Embiid, Seth Curry, when they're all on the court, I can see him shine away a little bit. Because Embiid is the guy we run our offense through. So I understand him shine away when and you got all the starters, Seth, Tobias, and Embiid. But when you had games where there was no Tobias, or when there's no Embiid, when there's no other guy or that guy, you need to attack the rim. Again, forget the shooting, but when you are the guy that we're counting on, you can't be passing the ball the same way you will as if Joel Embiid and the guys who are there are on the court. 
That is what I'm talking about. Old Ben Simmons will shy away when Embiid is there. But when he's not there, he's dropping 34. He's dropping 28. He's dropping 25. There's been multiple games where Embiid hasn't played and he still stayed the same as if he wants to give the ball to Shake and Tobias and to Maxi and to these guys rather than him just going to the hole. And that is the difference from last year and the years prior to this year. That's why they said one of these guys got to be traded because we saw Ben Simmons step up at an all-time level when Joel's not there and he's not doing that this year. Maybe it's the knee. Maybe it's the guys getting in his head, but something got to get fixed or Daryl Morey will continue to cook up trade offers. Now, there has been something interesting I've seen on Twitter just a little bit ago. Um, John Clark tweeted it, and it was about Doc Rivers being on the Rich Eisman show. And Doc Rivers said this to Rich about Daryl Morey and getting trades or trying to put trade packages together. Daryl had several trades so far that I've said no. I don't want to do that, and he just moves on. That's the type of relationship we have, and you got to have as coaching management. I think it works that way. So... Doc Rivers is admitting that Daryl Morey has had trade package that he put together and he showed Doc and Doc wasn't really feeling it. Now, these could be the end of the bench type trades, just some role players he's trying to shift around, or it could be more Ben Simmons packages. I know there's hot takes about Bradley Beal, Zach Levine, and I don't think any of them trades will happen now. If a trade for Zach Levine, Bradley Beal would happen, it would most likely happen around the trade deadline, which is March 25th. So we got a while for that. So Ben's value can go up, it could go down, it could stay the same, or we can not trade him. At the end of the day, I just want to see him be more aggressive. But it is interesting to see that Daryl Morey, a guy who will always keep his hand in the open market, looking, looking, looking. That's just what he does. He's done it in Houston, and he's going to continue doing that with the Philadelphia 76ers and I love it it means you gotta work hard or you're not safe now he don't have to publicly talk about it and get into people's head like Ben Simmons who might be fragile up here and not be able to play under these circumstances but Ben said he's happy to be in Philly so prove it and go out and play but again don't count out a trade for Bradley Bill or Zach Levine later down the pipeline around March if this continues or if we are not winning games because of other reasons, simple and plain. These are just speculations on what the trades were about. It could have been about anything. It could have been about Dakota Mathias, Isaiah Joe. It could have been end of the bench type trades. We don't know and we're not going to know because Doc said, nope, I'm good. Maybe Doc loves Ben. Maybe Doc don't. We don't know. Both these guys came here to coach Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid. And right now, one of them is living up to why these guys really wanted to coach him. That's all I can say. Now, let's move on to Shake Milton and Seth Curry. Two guys who game is similar. Now, Seth is a better three-point shooter. And Shake, I believe, is a better guy to put the ball on the ground and get a bucket. But these guys are both coming to their own. Shake Milton is a legit bucket off the bench. And that's why I understand people were like, maybe we should start him. Because he's young. He's growing. And let's not forget, this guy is a steal of a steal of a steal. He's on a contract that is four years for $7 million. I mean, how much better can you get a guy for four years? 7 million. He's young. He's dropping 20 plus points a game off the bench. A walking bucket. Shoots the three. The step back. The hezzy. Dribbles off the screen. Throws lobs. Goes to the hole. Shake Milton with the extra added pounds is using it and driving to the basket in an absorbing contact. He's not getting foul calls. If this name Shake Milton gets bigger, he's going to get them Harden calls, them LeBron calls, them Luka calls, because every single time Shake goes to the hole, he's getting bodied, and he's not getting the superstar calls. But this man is a baller, and I want to keep him on the bench. But you'll see there's going to be games that he's on the bench, and he has 33 minutes or 32 minutes. He plays more than Danny, maybe Seth. He's going to have more minutes than maybe Ben one time if this all keeps up. That's what I want to see. Just just because you're the sixth man, we just need you in a different rotation than other bucket getters. But I love it. And he will be closing out games because he just got that 
baby mamba mentality. I know I'm going a little far, but I love Shake's game and I like how it blossomed in such a little time. And now, talking about Blossom, let's talk about Seth Curry for a minute because his game is going up too. And it got cut short with COVID-19, but he is becoming a baller. Like I said many times, when he played for the Mavs, he had ball-dominant Luka. When he played for the Blazers, he had ball-dominant CJ and Dame Lillard, which I understand, they're ballers on their own. But now he got a team that when he's on the court and we're in the half-court set and Shake Milton's not on the court, if Ben, Tobias, Danny, Seth, and Joel, the starting five is on the court and we're in the half-court set, Ben Simmons is in the dunker spot. Danny Green is spread out. Tobias Harris is moving around on the three-point line or wherever he is, and Joel Embiid is coming up to do the pick and roll with Seth Curry. This offense in the half-court set is a two-man game with Joel Embiid and Seth Curry. One of them are going to shoot, and if they double-team Joel Embiid, Joel Embiid's going to kick it out to him. If he got the shot, he'll take it. If not, pass, pass, pass. Great ball movement, and you got Danny Green, or you got Tobias Harris, or maybe Ben Simmons in a dunker spot for a dunk, or even when Steph pump fakes, Hezzy goes to the rim, finds Joel Embiid, finds Ben Simmons, finds down the open corner three. He's just doing so much. Ball handling guard, and he's getting a chance to do that on this team where he couldn't do it on other teams. With the Blazers, with the Mavs, they just said stand in the corner, catch this ball, and shoot it, which he can still do at a hot clip. You see him catch, shoot, catch, shoot. Five threes, six threes, seven threes, four threes in a game. He's going to be able to do that. And he's a little slow motion off the dribble, but he got the little step back, the hezzy, and he's not going to the rim as hard to shake, but he's getting all that in his game. And when his three point shot's not working, he's not afraid to step in and hit a mid range to gather that momentum to be clutch later in the fourth quarter when Joel and B's getting doubled and triple team. Kick it out. Curry, big shot. And that's another thing. This team went healthy and the chemistry is up to par like it was after the 5th, 6th, 7th game. This team is not afraid to make the extra pass. Danny Green can shoot. Tobias can shoot. Shea can shoot. Seth can shoot. But they're not greedy. They're not looking for a 30-point game. I want the ball. It's pass, 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 pass it back. They'll pass three times for an open shot. They'll pass five times for an open shot. They just want the open shot. And that stretches the defense out and makes them so tired. So in the fourth quarter, they're tired at chasing all these wing threes. Now Joel Embiid is not tired because the shooters were shooting. They couldn't contest. They're out of breath. Joel Embiid take us home. Simple and plain. This team, when healthy, can compete. Like we did in the beginning, we got interrupted by COVID-19. And I know it's going to be a little bit Wednesday when we finally play a full game with the starters. We're not going to just snap back into it. Or maybe we will. But I can't wait to see this team get the chemistry, continue the chemistry, and continue to grow. And then Daryl Morey, use your binoculars, scope out what's going on. And if you see a trade fit before March 25th, whether it's a little role player trade and or if we need to trade Ben Simmons for a Levine or a Beal and you can pull it off do your Daryl Morey stuff simple and plain but I look forward to playing the Celtics with a healthy squad let's rain some threes let's drop a buck 25 and beat the Celtics payback for sweeping us with all that being said, I go by Philly Mike and this is the Philly Talk Podcast. Leave all your thoughts in the comment section about the Ben Simmons possible being traded for a star. The trades that Doc said no. Um, COVID-19 destroying us. How do you think the chemistry is going to get back when we finally start playing a couple games? And lastly, what are your thoughts on Shake and Seth? I love them and they're only going to go up from here. Until next time, you know what time it is. We out.